All right, we are back from lunch, set with our matchup. Uh, Dave Koenig and Erickson Smith, new to board one. And uh, the players are ready. We're jumping right back into it. As 4 a.m. PST says, Scrabble Gaming. That's right. That's what we got here. Four more hours of it. We've had four rounds in the books. Four more coming. And uh, another blank on an opening rack. It is amazing how many times we've seen that. But it is accompanied by uh, some unappealing consonants. So once again, welcome back to rounds five through eight of the Crescent City Cup. Brought to you by Scrabble Go and PlayScrabble.com. Um, we had a number of really interesting games this morning. Some surprising, uh, surprising moments. Some incredible moments, including uh, one instance where both players had the same rack. That's something I've never seen before. Um, and once again. My name is Will Anderson, and I think we also have our co-commentator, Conrad Bassett-Bouchard, here as well. Me uh, too. So, yeah, cool. We're, we're, we're all here, and uh, we're about to see Bag be played. Seems pretty reasonable here. Um, yes. So, um, don't see any issues with that play. There were a whole bunch of other options, so... We're back from lunch. Conrad, did you have a nice lunch out there? Um, what do you think? Did you see any of these players eating a ton of, uh, you know, non-brain food out there? What scouting report do you have on anybody? You know, I feel like people ate pretty decently. I went with a medium-sized group to a kind of, like, communal uh, market that had a few different, uh, like, food stalls. And... Um, I mean, you know, Eric was there. He was having a uh, vegetarian food because he does not eat meat, so far as I know. Um, lots of shrimp po' boys. I had a shrimp po' boy. It was fantastic. And uh, yeah, nothing too crazy. Um, you know, maybe a couple beers, but uh, yeah, it was uh, it was nice. Looking forward to dinner already. Well, as uh, by the standard of New Orleans, that sounds pretty uh, pretty wholesome. So, um, and I think maybe this of all years would be the least likely to imagine that uh, people are going to go out and get sloshed tonight. So this would be uh, the least um, advantage that any non-drinkers out there in the field would ever get. So um, I think I think that's true. I picked yeah. a good year to commentate, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, you did. So Erickson, uh, Dave opens short with bag. Erickson exchanges three tiles, leaving a nice bingo leave. And Dave responds pretty quickly with uh, an X underlapping play there. I think uh, there might have been plays worth putting on the board there for Erickson, who is a veteran of <laughs> Scrabble Twitch streaming. A little bit eerie to see him in the flesh as opposed to a commenter yeah. on a Scrabble stream. But... He's doing well, three and one for him so far. Um, so, yeah. So Dave off to a pretty good start, but he's only up by 40 after his first two plays. Um, Jacquezinho says, I'd have done gag. Yeah, I mean, those plays are all really, really close. Um, Slick Mamba, what uh, what can we help you with specifically? Let us know. I'm not sure we have a help command, but uh, happy to maybe provide a list of commands or otherwise feel free to ask any question. We'll do our best to give you an answer. So, all right, back over to Erickson now. He is, he, I somehow believe that this is not going to be a shutout here. I'm sure that, er oops, sorry, let me get Dave's score correct. His score is not four, it's 40. There we go. Um, there. So what to do here? I guess he has some nice underlaps there, doesn't he? Yeah, Ariac looks good. Uh, Jalapik mentions uh, adding IE to Foxy, but I think Ariac is just so nice. Like, it just doesn't give uh, you know much back for Dave. He's kind of stuck playing underneath the uh, F and the ensuing A that would go beneath it. Yeah, I mean, that's... Araic, putting that C out in space, 
It's an adjective, so it doesn't take an S, although the bags hook obviously is still there. But really, it, as you say, it gives very, very little interesting scoring opportunities or bingo opportunities back to Dave. So let's see if he can spot that. Yeah, a- a- AI was suggested as well underneath. Um, I think the biggest shortcoming of that is, uh, despite the good leave, doesn't really leave you much potential for next turn. Like, you know, where, where are you going to bingo with cider after that i guess yeah it's a good point that leave is is quite strong uh c-e-i-r-t but it really is on this particular board i would not be that worried about bingoing until i have an s in hand that is really what makes the dream of bingoing work here um so yeah let's see do i have a command that shows all the other commands here i'm not sure um yeah sorry for those looking to do some cur- commands but uh i mean we have this we have this command we have standings we have uh the define command if you're curious about a word so um we have the uptime should work or maybe not. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we're still time is zero. still in early days here on Twitch, and uh, we will get lots of. Oh, okay. Cater underneath there, leaving two eyes is definitely a dangerous game to be playing here. It scores well. Thirty-one points is good, but Araic would have scored six more points, and you don't keep I I. If Erickson draws a third I. We talk about having a third eye being important and nice for your vision, uh, yeah. metaphorically speaking. But in Scrabble, it is a death sentence, certainly to bingoing and very, very likely to scoring. And not only, okay, not only has he drawn one extra eye, he's drawn two. So now four eyes on the rack for Erickson. In fairness, that draw would have been pretty bad no matter what. So, um, you know, drawing, <laughs> drawing F I I N N is not really what you want to see, but, uh, there were better ways he could have weathered that storm. Um, anyway, let's see what happens with Dave here. Conrad, he actually has a shocking hook here too. Are you, are you familiar with this? The cater, the play of cater. Yeah. Jalapic points out that there actually is an A hook um, that I'm not sure I would have thought of this. Um, but uh, will we see an a cater play go down? No, it seems, seems unlikely. Um, but if, if Dave spots that A hook, he does actually have a seven-letter bingo with that blank. This would be an unbelievable play if he plays on, well, depending on what Erickson does. Erickson looks like he's going to play fining to the G of bag, which would be a good way to use up a couple of those eyes. Of course, it opens the board very widely, and I think that is for sure going to allow Dave to bingo with this rack. Oh, wait, it's Dave's turn. I say it's Dave's turn, and it All looks right. like he's missing his bingo. Okay. I think, All right. I think sorry the, about that. Yes. I, and sorry for my silence. I uh, had to re-up my hotel internet, so it kicked me off. Um, but it looks like Polygam is not getting played. Is that the, okay. the takeaway? That was it, yeah. That would have been it. So Polygam and Akater, that would be a really, really, really impressive play. So I don't, I, I don't know if I would have seen that for sure. Instead, Dave is going to play Gal, getting some good points under uh, underneath Cater um, and trying to retain some possibilities of doing some stuff with his blank. Let me give Erickson his points. Uh, so the bingo there would have been this. Oh, never mind. Sorry, Jalapic got there. Oh, let's allow this. <laughs> Sorry. Um, apparently auto mod a little overzealous there, but we fixed it. So, yeah. so it is not a polygam. It is not a, exactly. Yeah. A pra- what a you, practitioner of polygamy, what you have, if you are a polygamist, right? It's something else. So, um, 
Well, what's the uh, what is the proper tack here if you're Erickson? Play fining or exchange? I am certainly leaning strongly towards exchanging, leaving in in my mind, but maybe it's okay to play fining. I'm not sure. I, All it's right. just I, you, I don't think you play fining because like so many of your racks next turn are gonna suck still. So you may as well just take the hit now while the board is nice and closed. Yeah, I mean it's it's just scary too just to open a triple on a board that really has very minimal scoring opportunities outside of that spot. You could keep, you could get hit with the, well, not the X. It's already been played. Probably not the Q because it's going to be really tough to slot it in that spot. But certainly, something like Moop is going to go down for Dave here, scoring super well. Um, and it seems like he, yeah, he's going to play that pretty fast. So uh, that's certainly the risk you take with making an opening like that. Dave is going to hit that very hard and run his lead up to about a bingo leave. Um, and uh, hold on, let me get Dave's score. There we go. So you can see that Dave is up by about a bingo, and he has, he, even though he has a V on his rack, that oh, he just drew the second blank. So Dave is now very, very, very likely to get something nice down on his next turn. And Erickson is still struggling with three eyes on the rack there. So Yeah, um, and, I, and you may have covered this at the beginning or when I had lost internet for a sec there, but I'm reasonably positive this is Erickson's first time uh, on live stream for a tournament before. I I would assume he has never done that. I wouldn't think he had played before. So that matters. That is definitely uh, something that, in my personal experience, I remember my first time on stream being very nerve wracking for me. It was not an easy experience. And I remember just feeling like uh, I really, really didn't want to miss a bingo on stream, which is so funny because. I ended up being in a situation where I had one bingo available to find, and I think I eventually found it after like eight minutes of searching, and it wasn't even the best play in, available in that spot. So I could have saved a lot of time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's it was just a situation where had I just trusted my gut and made the play that I wanted to... Uh, I would have saved myself eight minutes of time and I made a ton of mistakes later on in time pressure. So that's something where you, it is a skill that you learn to compartmentalize the fact that, yeah, I am on stream. I'm being watched by an audience. You have to spend as little time as possible thinking about that sort of thing. Um, yeah. Do we do we have a elder word asks uh, if the players have to play on camera if they are told are we are we requiring that i know some tournaments like nationals do you basically agree to it in advance i'm not sure if we're doing that but i think in general like you know you should have to do it <laughs> my personal yeah opinion. i don't know what the directors are requiring but certainly in in a lot of cases i think most players even if they aren't you know aren't keen on being streamed most are willing to go along with it just because it's sort of understood that that is the expectation. So Wait, so um, he's trading five this time? Yeah, it looks like he's trading now, so maybe that's huh. a miss. There was a good play pointed out of uh, what... I'm not sure what the pronunciation of this would be, like Chaley or something like that. I pronounced Making Sealy, the but I have no idea. Sealy, yeah, I don't even know. I, I'm sure maybe somebody that no, knows better can help us sound out that word anyway either way erickson um exchanges instead of playing through and dave is going to play savers uh, or savory. Save, savory i think yeah, yeah savory is probably his choice i guess we'll find out as the game proceeds what has he made those blanks um if we're able to figure that out that will help to know now before i miss enter it here um Wow. AP Voris is pretty cool. <laughs> AP, AP Voris. AP Voris. I have no idea how you would say that. I'm going to guess that Dave's playing Savory, by the way. 
Yeah. Uh, it, that must be the lesser known cousin of um, a pure miss. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Another tremendous word. These crazy, crazy nine letter words that, you know, in Scrabble, there's already enough crazy words of a length that makes them appropriate for, uh, well, we're going to find out if this is savers right now, right? Like Erickson right. has reunion yeah. on his rack. If Dave played savers instead of savory, we're going to see a bingo go down for Erickson. If not, so this is actually a great little instructive lesson here, right? So Dave had an option with those two blanks of playing either savers or savory with a Y at the end. And note the difference between putting an S on the board and not. Placing an S on the board would turn this really nice rack for Erickson into a bingo. Avoiding placing an S on the board forces Erickson, he's gonna probably play something for only, I don't know, between 10 and 20 points. Yep. So a huge, huge difference. These tiny little nuances, you might say to yourself, well, savory and savers score the same amount. They look really similar on the board, but actually it makes a big, big difference. And being attuned to those nuances is one of the things that you will see at high in high level Scrabble that sets these players apart. Yep. So I'm going to guess that it is savory. Otherwise, Erickson would very likely have been bingoing already. Um, yeah, how many games has been answered? Only four. Each session will be four games. So we've had four in the four in the hopper already, four more this evening, and eight tomorrow. So hopefully nice. it, hopefully my voice holds out. I'm going to try to be more economical with the, with my yeah. verbiage, which is ironic given that we're here watching a Scrabble stream, but yeah. Well, I'm, I'm happy best. to happy to help you uh conserve perorate, perorate every now and then you can tell me to go ramble about something and I'm happy to <laughs> thank you. Tell a story about I someone may, eating bees or something. Yes, I may yeah, I may take you up on that. So yeah. Okay, noun I'm pretty sure that uh, is likely to go on top of savory, and he may have identified that. That looks like a pretty good play. Obviously, pretty good is relative. It's only going to score 16 points and leave EIR, which is rapidly, this board is rapidly, rapidly having fewer through tiles to play an eight-letter word. Right, like after fining, you had the I and the N. Now you just have the I. After savory, you've got the O, the U, the R, and the Y. Erickson's play would close all of that. Yeah, so. yeah, close off a lot of a lot of good letters to, you know, I mean, it ultimately opens an S hook, and it's it's a decent play, but, you know, it's he's at a point where it comes with a cost. Yeah, I mean, a play like that really is dependent on him picking an S. I guess again, it is very, um, it is tempting to wonder: is either player going to play a cater? Mm. I mean, noun is okay. There goes noun. That's a totally reasonable play in this situation. But the but knowing that hook on cater is such a big difference to whether this board is open and closed in the long term. So I'm curious to see if that hook gets played. But would not be like I would not give myself great chances of seeing that hook. What do you think, Conrad? Would you see a cater here if you were I, locked I, in? I would because you know the adding the s to it was kind of a you know it's a Collins only word that I learned when I was studying Collins words. So I would yeah. definitely see it, but uh, I can understand why you know how it would be very missable. Yeah, we'll see. Neither player with an A right now, so that's it still remains to be seen what will happen there. Um, so Dave has a still really commanding lead in this game. Both of the blanks used up on that one play, so really no hope for Erickson to draw those. Sometimes it can be pretty demoralizing in his shoes where you need to make a big comeback in the game and you just there's not even a chance for you to draw that one two punch of the blanks out of the bag they're they're all used up okay so a play of jure 
for Dave here. That makes some sense. I think that's better than a lot of the options. I guess if you were thinking about the A hook on Cater, it might be tempting to play something off of that C and go down with Eagle just to block a little bit of the potential of that hook. Um, but using the J certainly has its advantages here as well. So yeah. decent play for Dave. What does Erickson have here? Boy, he's got eyes again. This always seems to have multiple eyes on this rack. Yeah. Pretty uh, convenient for, for Dave to play off two tiles there and pick up an L. <laughs> oh, the Jurel hook. Great <laughs> That's point. That's pretty, pretty Amazing. convenient. So Dave plays Jure, J-U-R-E, not holding the L hook, and draws one that fits kind of nicely in that spot. Um, I'm sure he'll have some interesting play there. Uh, Erickson really... Erickson is getting ready to play Vivo down from the V of Savory, which he may have to do a play like this at this score and just hope that he starts bingoing somewhere else. Uh, okay, there it is, Vivo. That's a very, very aggressive play, obviously, but he's playing to win and hopes that Dave doesn't have anything very good, which, honestly, he can't do a great deal yeah, not in the a... triple. So it's a, good, it's a good time for Erickson to take a chance. You, you might even um, you might see the Jarrell hook now, in fact. It's Very honestly, true. One of the yeah. one of the more effective ways to neutralize Valor, the threat. Something like Valor is yeah. maybe what you're thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess this will be a next turn for uh, Eric. We'll see if he gets uh, the A hook. <laughs> yeah. This is this is the real test of whether he sees the A hook on Cater or not. Either D Aired is going to go down with a Cater, or I don't think we'll see a Bingo. So this this will be a good inflection point. It'll tell us a lot. Is Eric thinking about that uh, hook or not? So, um, yeah, readied, de-aired, either did way. You, yeah. Uh, Will, did you notice I see uh, the, the chat uh, 5CR4BB13 mentions that uh, Valor could also be a good play, as we noted. All I see in that username is CBB. I, it's, it, so, yeah, it's hard not to. I they, see that they, name. They yeah. must be my uh, must be my biggest fan. Well, I will say that uh, Scrabble in the chat is one of many, well, several people who uh, Scrabble players that have been playing a lot of Babel Royale with us lately, and that has been a lot of fun. We could obviously yeah. talk about that in depth. We could talk about Babel Royale, Wordle. It seems like word games are kind of having a moment here and the question yeah. is how can we in scrabble start to take take advantage of that moment um so all right so l high goes down for dave he uses his l hook and now let's find out is eric yeah. going to make this bingo here or not um, i feel like if he does not you have been given uh the ability to say wtf to him <laughs> That's true. Yes, uh, one can only imagine the things that WTF would be saying in the chat about his own self here. But uh, yeah. maybe later we'll we'll get some more in info about that. Um, yeah, Waybin says unclear if Koenig mix missed the A hook or the seven. Yeah, he could or both. Right? It's it's hard to know. That's something where we'll, we'd have to ask um, another time. But yeah, Dave, oh, Dave's got a bingo anyway. So this is definitely looking grim for Eric. Um, also, it's definitely worrisome again. Okay, I was going to say he hasn't played it yet despite having it spelled out. So I'm pretty sure he's not thinking of the hook. And sure enough, ED no. goes down in the corner. <laughs> Excuse me. Stand by. Yeah, I mean, I guess this really tells you you gotta gotta learn those those hook words um, on these boards that otherwise seem really closed. There are opportunities to be had. Oh, and the Q draw, the yeah. Q draw, the maximum amount of punishment possible. As Dave is about to play Lowry's, and man, 
a few of these games so far today have been quite lopsided. This one is uh, surely reached that point right now. Uh, huh. So, yeah, not a ton of hope here for Erickson down 200 points. 315 to 103 is my score here. Still, Cater is uh, the highest scoring play that Eric has made here. While Dave's bingoed a couple times already. So, um, well, he's got a place to play his Q at least. But, uh, yeah, we'll just have to see how the game proceeds from here, whether Eric can cut the gap at all. Yeah. So, all right, the Q is played. So, Cadi for 34. I guess another chance to possibly hook that A there, but I think this is slightly more defensible. So Cadi goes down, Eric up to 137. Dave's got another S on his rack. He's got pretty good tiles, except for those two Ys together, which don't look that appetizing. Oh, there's a really cool play if he spots it, actually, to play through. Oh, never mind. Oh, no, it is there. I was going to say, is it actually there? Yeah, he could play Mooped, right? And Benny. Oh, Mooped. Will he play Mooped? So, yeah, Moop, an archaic word. Nobody should feel bad for not knowing the word Moop. But obviously now with Moop on the board and the D, two spots, well, yeah, two spots lower than the P, really intriguing possibility of uh, making a play in there. So we'll see if he spots that, but he really doesn't have to. He can just play by alongside Lowry's, which would be a perfectly solid play. Yeah, and as as we know, uh, would block Rez, although as Eric has spelled out, Zircon is uh, pretty solid as well. Oh, yeah, Zircon at the base of the board through the yeah. O of Vivo, for sure. Yeah. That's definitely a nice idea. Um there are other options that he could play down there, like just crows. But either way, it's going to be very difficult to for Eric to make a play with the Z at the base of the board that also creates a bingo lane for himself. Either the C or the Z will block off the lower left quadrant. Again, this is all pending the A hook on Cater. But I don't think we're going to see that. Um so, all right. So, Bay is the play for Dave. So, he's up to 346. Um, all right. So, will we see Crows or Zircon? Okay. So, now you see Eric has rearranged his tiles such that maybe he's not going to play Zircon. He might play Crows just because scores a little bit better to play the C as well. Yeah, I mean, either either way, you're kind of blocking up that part of the board. So. Exactly. May so. as well leave, leave more space there for later. Um, you know, maybe, well, <laughs> I guess a cater is probably not going to get played. So maybe some other way that they get down to the, the board eventually. Yeah, with that way, maybe being the eagle hook if they think about that. So um, in that in that case maybe zircon is better just because you keep the e to fish again with the eagle hook you see gal on the board right right to the left of savory eagle is a valid word so um yeah, yeah we'll see but either way it's also relevant to look at the time here eric using a lot of time so far dave's still got plenty of it left Okay, Zircon is the play. This makes some sense. It scores 51. That's a lot of points. It keeps the E yeah. to maybe reopen the lower left. It's going to be very difficult to open it productively, but it's not impossible. Uh, but still, definitely worth noting that uh, Eric's down a ton. Dave is basically a mortal lock to win this game. The only question yeah. is by how much, or will there be anything interesting along the way which, given the games we had this morning, I could easily imagine something wild or crazy happening here. So we'll just have to see. Mm. 
Yeah. Not too much to say at this point. <laughs> yeah. What's coming here? Just nice. Okay. That's going to score quite well. In Dave's shoes, he's really not needing to bingo another time. He can definitely just keep scoring quite well. Oh, and a good point by Sidewinder. NYM, NIM. That is a pretty yeah. nice follow up play. Good, good setup. Yeah, that looks he clever. May not get to use it, but still, the, True. the thinking, thinking's definitely there. Yep. Makes a lot of sense. Um, so Dave working his way, continuing to work his way up to that 200-ish point lead here, which, I mean, oh, wow, look at that, Matt Weed. Well, now we will know now once and for all, did, did Dave see a cater or not? <laughs> we yeah. will know once and for all. Now we'll see. And that's the sort of thing, that hook on cater is the sort of thing that you could miss the first time around and right. then start to realize, and it dawns on you mid-game. That could easily yeah. have happened. You know, we're not robots. If we miss something the first time around, you can easily, you know, with time and... And just uh, context, right? Yeah, for sure. It's like, oh, I need a, I need a place. To, oh, can I hook an A anywhere? Can I hook a T anywhere? Exactly. Like, oh, right, a cater. Well, now all of a sudden... Great point. Yeah, it could. He might be likelier to see it, as you say, because he's now forced to if he's going to need to bingo. Right? He has yeah. no other choice but to see it yeah. if he's going to play Matt Weed. Which, for the record, anybody watching, that is a valid word on Dave's rack right there. Yeah. Matt Weed um, would be a wonderful way to score a boatload of points here. Uh, so we'll find out on on Dave's next turn. I think it's very, very, very likely that that spot will continue to be wide open for him. So yeah, and I, I mean, I have no doubt that Dave knows the word Akater. Like I, I think there's a, it's very, very likely he knows it. Just it's missable. Yeah, so it's the if hook. He, if he doesn't it's find the, it, yeah, it's the hook that's hard to think of, especially because the C in that spot is not a logical hook right it doesn't having that c be out in space there aren't a lot of hooks that go in front there um so okay ah he is the play wow so <laughs> that is uh yeah Whoa. not sure what the thinking is there except to just keep opening you know the triple there is just wide open even if uh dave misses his a hook and bit well we know he hasn't missed his bingo he has it spelled out on his rack if he misses the a hook he will still be able to play something pretty heavy. Um, so I actually, yeah, I think Dwam is an interesting play. I actually favor D-E-A-W just to keep that M for the Nim spot. Why use the M now yeah. if you don't have to? So he he seems to uh, be missing that. Uh, Jack Casino, can somebody block Mubot? I have actually set Mubot out to have that message every 15 minutes. So, um, no, I don't think I'm the best candidate to block it when I have set it up to spam. Hopefully, yeah. uh, some of you guys will be inspired to click on that link uh, if you see it enough times. So, <laughs> apologies for that. If you so, click on it, it won't show up again. No, it'll, it'll still Yeah, show if up you again. click on it, it will still show it up will again. Still show up. Maybe I'll change it to every 16 minutes instead of 15. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So, good play of DA there. Dave going up huge. Of course, a cater would have been the thing to see to score even better. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, airspeed should make it closer, assuming he finds it um, oh airspeed yes oh man airspeed is one of those that as people are saying in the chat it is one a it's odd because like airspeed is kind of a normal word by scrabble standards i feel yeah. like some for some reason something about the s being in the center of the word makes it more annoying to find i've always yeah. found that you know yeah i mean i it was one that I had missed, and I'll never forget it because it was it was either against I forget if it was Kenji or Dave Weekend, but it was at a, a Reno tournament in 2006. Six, and I missed airspeed. Unfortunately, because I missed it, I never forgot it. I was still young enough then that like if I saw a word once, I'd remember it. So yeah, oh, to be that now, young now again. I, now now I'm old. 
Yeah, I was just, exp- I think we were just talking we about were, that we before, were, yeah. about like my, my, I think it was in the context of my uh, phony word recognition, right? Like, yeah. can, can I rely on that as much as I could in my youth? And the answer is no, I still feel like I'm pretty, pretty good, but it's not as good as it was when I was younger. And I'm sure so too with the word learning, but yeah. Oh, I mean, so be it definitely like it ain't the same anymore. (laughs) Yeah. A little bit more work required to stay up on the, uh, dictionary. So yeah, well, we're not seeing airspeed go down yet. There is also impairs through the M of Moop that was pointed out. So we'll just have to see. But I feel like uh, airspeed would be the the more findable one, right? Yeah, oddly. It's it's the NWL word. It's, you know, I think it's a findable play. Yeah. But yeah, and, as Waybin says, it is kind of tough sometimes on stream. It's your first stream. You're down by 200 points. It doesn't feel very good. It's very easy to sort of lose track of sort of your normal cadence when playing. Something yeah. about sitting uh, on that top uh, board. Uh, oh, uh, that looks like all the right letters. Oh, it is all the right letters. There okay. we go. Well, there we go. Airspeed for Erickson. We right, like to we can, see it. Yeah. And uh, he cuts that deficit quite a bit with that play. So we like to see that some uh, measure of consolation for him here. Yeah, I just feel a little like oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> can, I got a move good on. play. Yes, yeah. I got a good play. I can move on. Yeah, so. stream. Uh, the stream rejoices for WTF's moment of happy. Yes. So he does cut the gap quite a bit. Um, the game is pretty close to complete. Let me get the tracking up for you guys to potentially see what is Dave looking at here. Stand by just a moment. Okay, so Dave is going to look at the unseen tiles and uh, note that they are quite weak, no ease at all. So the upper right is going to be the unseen tiles from Dave's point of view, and it's going to always, hopefully, if I update it in a timely way, it's going to be the point of view of the player who is on turn. So, all right. Oh, look at this. We've got- He's going to... He's going to play there, oh, but wow, not... He missed, is he missing his own setup? Not or? with his own setup. Although this is a pretty good play. Like, he he could potentially opt to play mute over something like team anyway, just because he doesn't want to keep the U, but... Um, yeah. I don't... I mean, looking at that pool, I don't really think it matters if you... I mean, I'd rather take the points, yeah? Yeah, I I agree. So maybe it was a miss. Again, it is it is, is a really a hair splitter here at this score in this situation. But yeah, yeah. I would I would probably consider uh, grabbing some points. But uh, still a nice overlapping play there. And Erickson with uh, a few too many consonants and T's here. I guess he could re overlap if he wants to if he sees the Nied hook there. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Also, his time is really low. He's getting under a minute here. He still has a bit of game left to play. Just get his tracking now. So from Uh, his point of view, not that he has any time to look at it. Here's what he's looking at. I mean, I think he's, looks like he's going to see Dato next to DL Pinto. Uh, and just go for it, I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Um, so, yeah, some discussion of is there a Division Two in uh, CSW? The answer to that is yes. We have yeah. enough players to support two divisions there. And, of course, there are also two divisions in NWL. And if you're curious, if anyone is curious and has uh, people that you're hoping to watch, you can get all the standings for either division there with that link for exclamation point standings um so definitely uh lots of players um in all four divisions and um yeah regardless of uh who you're rooting for you should be able to follow along there i'm rooting for you will (laughs) thank you very much i appreciate that um yeah it's um i mean we can in scrabble it's definitely like 
it was an amazingly refreshing feeling to travel to the Alchemist Cup and actually truly honestly be able to root for my friends on the same team. That was an amazing experience. In Scrabble, there is a little bit of a lone wolf effect even when you have friends that you're, you know, playing alongside in these events. You really are sort of uh, rooting for yourself more than anything until you get eliminated from contention and then you can root for others. But um, yeah. it's tricky sometimes to balance that. You know, you have friends that you're playing these tournaments with, including many, of, I mean, for many of us, our Scrabble, you know, family is some of the best friends that we uh, have ever made. So it's, uh, so it's, it's nice to be able to root. For, uh, yeah. for your compatriots. Yeah, I mean, I love, yeah, it's it's super fun to, to root for others. Obviously, uh, Alchemist was probably the most fun because you legit actually get to be teammates, and that's, I don't know, the best feeling. <laughs> it was an amazing um, feeling, yeah. So hopefully we'll, uh, you know, someday on this channel, it'll be, a, it'll be a treat when we do have team events of that nature. It's definitely on our roadmap to try to get events like that uh, or to support events like that that already exist and yeah. uh, have team coverage on this channel. You know, the the um, the sky is the limit for what we we have plans to broadcast here. So yeah. this is just the very, very first step here on this Twitch channel. Um, and we really do thank everybody for watching along. I'm seeing a concurrence above 100. That's awesome. Love to see how high we can get that. Um, but uh, oh, we got to give Erickson his points for his previous play. Sorry to him. Uh, TWL broadcasts are not on the roadmap, I don't think. <laughs> well, it, I mean, it depends on, I mean, we're going to have, for example, I think it's fair to say that um, we're going to have Axer Typo. He is going to mm. be our first guest sure. commentator. I, yeah. So in that sense, there will be TWL content coming to this channel. Um, with respect to sort of this serious competitive play, um, we'll have to play it by ear, but I am definitely, you know, with something that we can uh, discuss maybe off stream for those that are curious, but we want to showcase the world's best players competing. That's that's my number one thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I should say, I didn't envision uh, streaming, uh, you know, big money tournaments with TWL. That was more more how I was responding to the question. Yeah, and I think you know the, I wouldn't be surprised if those broadcasts come along. Uh, it's just the question of where they will be is still an open question. So um, yeah, oh yeah, that's true. Jesse uh, must have dropped out for. I mean, anybody that had issues or concerns about traveling right now it seems totally defensible, given the state of the world. I'm thrilled that so many players are still there, and hopefully it seems like lots of uh, important safety protocols that we're all adhering to here. I'm just hopeful that maybe in a few months' time, we won't have to worry quite so much about all of the safety aspects of uh, traveling to these events, and uh, we can really let loose with some awesome in-person events um, yeah. that start to set the set the bar, set a new standard yeah. for what we can do here. Yeah, I can't I can't wait, honestly. I mean, even being able to I hosted a you know a small tournament at my house uh, in the fall and even just being able to have you know ten people come over when the weather was nice was just like, yeah, this is great. I can't wait to really get back to this um, on the larger scale and not just you know the the little fun small events, if you will. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's um, it's going to be great when we can uh, get back to it in full. And we had a little glimpse of it, like you said. And I feel like we're closer than ever to getting out of this. <laughs> but then again, I'm not a epidemiologist or a say, doctor. If, if, if by out of it you mean being stuck with it in an endemic way forever, then yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, as well, hopefully it can at least be something that doesn't represent sort of a, a clear and present yeah, exactly. to travel yeah. anywhere so 100 yeah. percent. yeah yeah um so anyway dave is definitely um thinking dave is definitely thinking hard here and he's doing the right thing just to do his best to calculate out these end games you might be saying well wow he's up by well over 100 and eric has all consonants why is he spending so much time grinding here 
on calculating end games. And the answer, again, as we've mentioned a couple times, is that uh, the margin of victory that you compile in your games is used as a tiebreaker. So he's doing his best to come up with uh, as good of a sequence as possible that helps him win by as large of a number of points as possible. And you never know how close things will be with other players. Conrad and I discussed a little bit earlier, we don't have to rehash the whole thing, about the pros and cons of using point spread as a tiebreaker. But for now, that is the way we do things. So that's why Dave is kind of grinding away here. And But I, I think one thing I would add here is uh, specifically, you know, even if you're not someone who feels like they can solve every endgame and you feel like trying to solve an endgame perfectly is just pretty intimidating, take a situation like this where... If you take a pretty cursory look and, you know, say you know your weird fives, um, it's, you know, it's pretty clear like, oh, Welked is a play that exists, you know, or like Mock. There aren't many, there aren't many good plays that you know your opponent's going to have based on the tiles. So you can kind of just like play out those two instances like, well, what if, what should I do to block Welked? What should I do to block Mock? And you can actually play a pretty decent endgame. Uh, when you kind of know these obvious, when you see your opponent has a couple obvious plays. So I think to some degree, because Dave can feel pretty confident that, you know, those are one of the, the two plays that are coming, he can iterate out through all the turns and the potential plays pretty effectively. Yeah, it's a really good point. Um, end games are such a different skill set, I feel, compared to finding plays early on in the game, just because, again, late in the game, the players are, you know, you can see Dave has a score sheet that he's consulting. Erickson has a score sheet over on the right side of the table. The players are actually crossing the letters off every time a play is made. Or, as Conrad said earlier, he and Dave Wiegand uh, cross off a bunch of letters midway through the game when they get a chance. But either way, however you do it, by the end of the game, you should know exactly what tiles your opponent has and how to best combat those tiles. So um, when, when your opponent doesn't have any uh, vowels on their rack, that's a great way to sort of make that recognition and adjust your plays in the end game accordingly. So uh, seeing some cool uh, possibilities. Um, okay, so Dave is going for the block here of uh welked which makes some sense to me here and also erickson has a very very low number of uh very minimal time left to calculate any end games of his own yep. so dave uh, um blocking welked leaving wit for erickson and uh let's see what he follows up with for his second play so 347 now to 471 for the players. Um, yeah, mock would be uh, the the play through MA where Dave is playing Immeret, which is a nice uh, two-turn sequence, I have to say. Um, not sure if it was mathematically the best way, but it's pretty close and it makes a lot of sense um, to pursue that sequence. So final score of this one, we have it as 505 for Dave Koenig to 347 for Erickson Smith, which I guess is some small measure of consolation, given that for much of the game, Erickson was down by 200. Uh, but really, this is mostly a game that uh, Erickson will want to forget about as soon as possible and move on. He still is 3-2. and two. That's a perfectly yeah. solid record here.